What would you do if you couldn't feed yourself anymore? I'm Christina Chase, and this is episode two of Sunday Leftovers, where I take a second look at Sunday's readings and look at the meaning that they have in my own life. I don't know if you can tell by this video, but I can't move my arms at all. Not a bit. I used to be able to. But my progressive disease, spinal muscular atrophy, makes me weaker and weaker so that every year I lose some ability. Like the ability to move my arms and hug someone, or hold a book in my hand to read, or write with a pen, or feed myself. Not being able to put my own food in my own mouth is one of the hardest things that I have to deal with. And the transition was awful. Trying to get the timing right, you know, between my parents and me, and the amount of food, and ugh, ugh, the angle. I get food all over my chin and my shirt. I still have to wear a bib. Sandwiches were out because I didn't like people's fingers in my mouth. Soup, out of the question. Sometimes I would get stabbed by the fork. It was hard, and I made it worse because I was pretty rotten. I was irritated, annoyed, frustrated, petulant. Sometimes I would even be mean. I was miserable, and I was grumbling at the situation. I was full of grumbling. Something had to kip. Here's a morsel from Sunday's reading. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. St. Paul isn't advocating transformation through psychedelic drugs or even educated study because he's not talking about thinking of things in a new way so much as being new. Put away the old self, he says, and put on the new. I will never be able to feed myself. That situation can't change. So I have to change. I need patience, which my parents have a lot of. I need forgiveness, which my parents practice often. I need courage. I need to be able to let go of the proud desire to, to be independent, to control things. Humility. I need compassionate concern for the other, understanding, empathy, gratitude. I need in other words, love. There was no aha moment when things got better. It happened gradually. And I still slip sometimes, but I am better. And that's because of love. I love my parents, and I don't want to be a brat to them. We need food every day because it doesn't last. It's perishable. But love never fails never ends. My parents were feeding me love, starting from my teenage years right through into my early 20s, feeding me love with every forkful of potatoes and beans. But I wasn't receiving it because I was stuck on the surface, in the mess, in the flesh, and I wasn't open to the spirit. By loving them, I became open and became at peace with the situation and found that lasting peace that no hardship can ever change. I may end up in a nursing home someday with paid strangers to feed me, people who won't love me, but I can love them. Loving is one ability that my disease will never take away, and it's the greatest thing that we can bring with us into eternity. Thanks for watching. If you would like to read a story that's similar to this theme, then go to my blog, divineincarnate.com, and search for the keyword teeth. That's right, teeth. Um, I hope that you will give me a thumbs up if you like the video even a little bit. Add your thoughts in the comments. Maybe share a moment, a time when you made it through a difficult change because of love. Check out my other videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube channel, and I hope to see you next week for another episode, another helping of Sunday leftovers. And until then, remember, love never ends. Work for love. Peace.